No mic. Okay, no problem. Um, so, it's going to. Um, I th think my one second. My lesson plan looks a bit weird. Just give me a sec. I have to figure out what the problem. Is. Um. Ah, okay. Uh, you know who I am, Furkin. This is Furkin. I'm confused. <laughs> Hi, Quang. So, don't you have a mic? <laughs> um, okay. Here is a question. Um, how often do you like to read for pleasure? So, do you guys spend a lot of time reading in your spare time? Um, and what sorts of stuff do you read? Do you like reading novels, or do you read about um, history or anything like that? Um, Servet. Actually, I don't really read by pleasure. I just read because I hate to read. <laughs> just, I, I like, I do research on the internet when I can I don't read novels generally. I get things online. Mm-hmm. Um, I read a lot of Wikipedia online. <laughs> Whenever I'm bored, I'm always on Wikipedia and then clicking links and going like all over the place and continuing to read stuff. Yeah, um, same. Right? Yeah, same. I like doing research on internet. And Researching like for just because, just for fun. Just for fun. Sometimes I wonder something. I it is both. I practice my English because I do research in English and also answer questions. Uh, I find answers of my questions. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. It's good. Um, okay, and uh, Quang, what about you? Hi, Quang. Uh, there you are. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. And you been? I'm good, thanks. Um. Quang, how often do you like to read for pleasure or read for fun? Yeah, I I usually read for for pleasure. Sorry, you read for for pleasure. Mhm. Mm so, what sort of stuff do you read? Like novels or um, Wikipedia or news? Oh, I I would for news, yeah, news. Because mm -hmm. uh, I I I I prefer news, uh, sports, not sports, education, and market, market. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And um, what about you, Victor? How often do you read for pleasure? And what sort of stuff do you like reading? Like novels, textbooks, news. Uh, I think uh, quite often, and I uh, I like uh, I like reading news. Uh, Sometimes I need I read novels, but I don't have enough um, consistent. I think so to read all uh, long novels. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just going to turn you up, Victor. Um, I don't know if it's me or you, but it's a little quiet. Okay. Sorry, so you said you like to read novels? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, and Zavi doesn't have a microphone, but that's okay. Um, I don't know if I've told you guys, but I read a lot. I haven't been reading as much lately because I've been busy. But um, I majored in English and French literature at, in university, so all I did was read. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of reading. But I love it. It's um, very relaxing. Um, okay, so today we're looking at um, 10 most overlooked ancient mysteries in history. And we're also working on, for pronunciation, um, pausing strategically for emphasis when we're speaking. So I'm just going to go over the pronunciation point quickly. 
Um, for example. OK. I'm going to read something. And I want you to try to repeat it back to me. I'll read it once without pauses, and then again with pauses. And we'll see how you do. OK, first time. Tomorrow is a busy day. I'll fly from New York to California through Chicago. My flight will leave by 8, and I'll be on the road till 10. So that's no pauses. <laughs> and then with pauses, I'll fly from New York to California through Chicago. My flight will leave by 8, and I'll be on the road until 10. I'm echoing. I'm echoing. <laughs> yes, I know you're freaking. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, so is it easier to understand with pauses or without pauses? Without pauses. Without pauses. Um, so when we're pausing, it's not always because there's a comma. Like in this sentence, for example, there, there aren't commas necessarily, but we're still pausing throughout the sentence. So here's what it looks like with the pauses. Um, I'll fly from New York to California through Chicago. My flight will leave by 8, and I'll be on the road until 10. So these pauses, does anyone know what the little phrases are called in between the pauses? There's a name for them. No? They're called thought groups thought groups. Um, and there isn't really a strict rule about where to pause. It's just kind of where the pauses um, fall naturally in your speech. Um, I'm doing it all the time when I'm speaking. I just did it and again. <laughs> so we do it naturally when we're speaking. We're pausing um, between sort of things that fit together in our speech. Um, so maybe I'll get each of you to read that um, and try to use the pauses strategically as you're reading. Okay. Um, Servette, why don't you read it first for us? Yes. I fly from New York to California through Chicago. My flight, my flight will leave by 8 and I will be on road until 10. Okay, good. And... Quang, can you try it? Yeah, okay, teacher. I fly from New York to California for Chicago. My fly, I left by 8. Then we'll be on the road until 10. Good, very good. Okay. I'm just going to note about flightal. Um, it, it's for flight will, right? Flight will. We're um, making a contraction. My flight will leave. Um, so when you're pronouncing it, you don't read will. You just make the ul sound. Flight will leave. My flight will leave. Okay. Um, Victor, can you try it? I fly, I fly from New York, California, to Chicago. My fly will leave at, by 8, and I will be on the road until 10. Very good. Perfect. And, um, okay, that's pretty much it. Does anyone have questions about the strategic pausing or anything else about the pronunciation point? Like, why do we pause? No? Okay, let's take a look at our grammar. So, just give me a second. I'm just opening up my grammar document. In this first sentence, is to California more stressed? Because when we think of thought groups, I think of from New York to California as a one group of thought. So from as New I fly from California. New York to California sounds a little bit like maybe California is the more important part in this sentence. Oops. Bless you. Um. I tried to mute myself before I sneezed. <laughs> um, from New York to California. New York to California. New York to California. Um, I don't know if it's that it's emphasized necessarily. I think we're just kind of naturally pausing um, because well, I don't really have an answer. Let me try to write it the other way. I'll fly. New York to California through Chicago. Yeah, you might say it all together. 
from New York to California through Chicago. I guess it kind of depends on how you're reading it. Um, if you're reading it kind of like it's a list of your plans, I'll fly mm -hmm. from New York to California through Chicago. Then you're kind of pausing a little bit between each place. Um, but maybe you could do it that way too, Servet. I'll fly from New York to California. It's like okay. I said, there's no real rules. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see. So it just it depends on your voice and you know your um, your own emphasis. Um, do you use flightal? No, it's not. No, no, no. It's not a, a proper contraction. It's just one of those things where when we have the word will after another word, we tend to link will to the previous word with that all sound, like we're dropping the w in will a lot of the time. Like will not till, hmm? Like won't? I don't understand. Not only all with will. Sorry, I don't understand the question. Like in writing, we don't write the contractions usually, but this is meant to just be a spoken thing. Um, and no, it's not just with will, it's with a lot of words, like had. I have to see. Okay, sorry, I don't understand the question. Does anyone else understand what the question is? No. You don't have a microphone. Okay. Um, okay. I'm just going to give you guys the link here to our grammar. Okay. And okay. So I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, prepositions of place and time. Um, there's other lessons where we're talking about them separately, um, but in this one we're just looking at common expressions and common prepositions um, within both. So another lesson specifically for place and one for specifically time. Um, how about Quang? Would you like to read for a minute for us? Okay, teacher. First, from and to are used for place and time. From you talking about an origin, I'm from Chile. I'm leaving from my house in 10 minutes. From and to are used when talking about going from a location. Huh? Uh, to another. Sorry. She is driving from home to work. He will travel from Japan to Egypt. Two is used to refer to destination when traveling. I will go to Japan. Jack is going to the mall. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. So, um, from and to, we use it for time and place. Right, so we're using it for a place here. You're driving from one place to another. Um, to is for the destination where you're arriving. Um, but you can also use it for time, which it's going to explain in a second. Um, hi, Ken. Hi. Nice hi. <laughs> yeah. um, Victor, would you like to read part two? Second. Okay. Oh, I couldn't see the screen. Oh, okay. Um, do you see the document? Uh, I've tried to open it. Oh, yes, okay. Second, from and until I used when referring to a start and end point in time. Just like with from and to. I'll be working from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. tonight. She is in Paris from June until July. Until can also be used to talk about the end, about an end point in time when something stopped. She will be working until 10 at night. 
Jack could be at the library until he finished his assignment. Note, it is common to hear people say till instead of until. Right, so sometimes we just say till. If you, you can write till as well. Usually to write it, we use um, an apostrophe before, like this, to show that we've um, cut off part of the word. Uh, is that make it informal? Yeah, it's in for, it's very informal. Um, mm. So instead of saying he'll be working until ten, I would say he's working till ten. It's much more common to say till when you're speaking, um, and it's more common to write until when you're writing. Mm -hmm. So until we use to show the end point in time when something stops. Okay. Um, okay, Ken, why don't you read a uh, third for us about through? Okay. Third, through is used for movement in place and time. Through with place. I drove through New York to go to New Jersey. She walked through the park. Through with time. Michael Jackson was popular through 2008. We worked through the night to finish the project. So, place, time. Now, if you say that you go through something, it means literally like through the middle. So, if you're driving through a town, it means you're driving maybe down the town's main road through the entire town. Um, when you're talking about it in time, you're showing that it was during a time period. So, he was popular through 2008. Um, that It implies that he wasn't as popular after 2008. That 2008 was like a peak year of popularity. That's what's implied by that. Um, there's a question about as of. Can you talk about things like as of? I, I don't understand the question, Frickin. Maybe as for? As for? I don't know. I as of 2012. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, if you say as, let me, as, will, or be, it's used for the future. So as of um, January 2014, there will be, I don't know, smoking indoor. Um, so as of, is using, we use it to show um, not exactly a, l a limit, how can I word it? Um, it means on a particular date something is going to happen. Or if you use it in the past, you would say as there um, smoke. So you can use it either way to, to talk about the future or the past. As by, as by. No, I don't we don't I don't know if we really use as by. Do you have an example? As by. Yeah, it sounds kind of awkward, as by. Um, maybe that is a thing. I just can't think of an example right now. But as of is is common. Um, so it show it's used to show a particular date or a particular time period that on that date or during that time, something specific happened. So like a limit, um, a rule, a law was enacted or um, something like that. So use it to show kind of change in time, a change. Um, okay. Any other questions? Or any other prepositions you want me to go over? So we've got some more time. Okay. Um, let's take a look at our article. Here it is. Ten most overlooked mysteries in history. I love rhymes. <laughs> Um, so, this person put together a list 
of 10 ancient mysteries that haven't been solved. Great mysteries of science. Um, so let's take a look at some of them. I'm just going to... I like, I like when it lets me zoom really big. So it says, over the last few months, we've gone through 30 of the world's greatest mysteries, but what we haven't covered are ancient mysteries. This list aims to put that right. Here are 10 great unsolved mysteries of science. Do you have a theory that might solve one of these mysteries? If so, tell us in the comments. So the first one, Rongo Rongo. Um, I think... Maybe I'll let you guys read today to change it up. Um, how about, um, Ken, would you like to read about Rongo yeah. Rongo for us? Rongo Rongo, mm -hmm. while many people know of the Moai of Easter Island, not that many people know of the other mystery associated with Easter Island. Rongo Rongo is the high, uh, high er, graphic written language of region's area inhabitants, Rango Rongo is strained in that no other neighboring ocean, oceanic people used a written language. It appeared around the seven, uh, 1700s and... Seven, no, no. Yeah, 17, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, the 1700s, yeah. Though was unfortunately lost after the early European colonizers banned it because of its uh, ties of the native islanders' pagan roots. Good. Um, it's that same vowel sound from earlier, um, Ken. That this sound in early, early. It's that er, er sound early. like this. Early. 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 Yeah, that was better. Early. So just be careful that when you see an A beside the E, um, you're not tricked into thinking it's an A sound. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, like you, you read it like hourly, hourly, hourly. And it should be early, early. Early, early. Mm -hmm, good. Um, okay, interesting. Rongo, rongo. <laughs> so they're talking about e saying that, you know, we know about Easter Island, but we don't know about maybe the language necessarily. Um so lost language. It looks really strange. I don't know. What do you guys yeah. think of these characters? They it's look like, like kiss, people. kiss herring. They kiss look herring. like what? Kiss kiss herring painting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's really strange, right? This is. It's like a fish here. <laughs> it's characters, not the letter, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm um. Okay, let's take a look at number nine, the lost city of Hilak. Um, Quang, would you like to read this one for us? Here's a picture of of it. Okay, mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, thank you. Uh, in the late second century A.D., the Red Knight of Bosnia wrote a, a cow how. <coughs> Um, in one night, a powerful earthquake destroyed the rice right cities of Hawaii. Hawaii. With the tsunami washing away, what remained of the once flowed with flow missing metropolis. Metropolis, a city yeah, metropolis. capital. Metropolis. metropolis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The city capital of the Akin land list where the worship center be walked to the ancient god were was sudden god of the sea. There was no trace of the legendary society mentioned outside of the ancient Greek right until eighteen sixty five. When an archaeologist found some root talk to help confirm highlight, a bronze coin with the unmistakable head of Poseidon. Poseidon. In two thousand, Poseidon. Mm -hmm. In two thousand one, Hades managed to locate the ruins of High Halide beneath the mud and gravel of the coast, and are currently trying to base together the rise and sudden fall of. Real Atlantis. Whoa, okay. they spelled peace wrong. <laughs> I before E except after C, guys. 
<laughs> it should be P-I-E-C-E, -E, but that's okay. Um, Poseidon, good. Uh, one other word, it's coast. Quang, coast. Coast means uh, the seaside. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay, interesting. Um, I wonder... I always wonder when I see pictures like this how much they dug up and how much, you know, was already kind of like that. Anyways, so um, kind of interesting. Another hidden city, Sidon. Um, Ferkin's asking, is this Atlantis? No, it's not Atlantis. Um, it's not Atlantis. They're saying what has been called the real Atlantis. So people are saying, like, this was a bigger deal than Atlantis. Um, isn't Atlantis in the water? I thought. Oops. Yeah. It's an island, yeah. So no, it's not. Yeah, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. I thought Atlantis yeah. is uh, in New Jersey. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's supposed to be like an island, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, let's look for it at another one. Uh, Victor, would you like to read about the bog bodies? This is a really creepy picture. I don't like it at all. <laughs> the bog bodies. Go ahead, Victor. The bog bodies. This mystery may even be a problem for those legendary investigators from CSI and the like. The bog bodies are hundreds of ancient corpses, corpses found buried around the northern box and wetlands of northern Europe. These bodies are remarkably well preserved. Some dating by 2000 years. Many of these bodies have telltale signs of torture. And telltale. Other many of what? Telltale signs. Telltale signs of torture and other medieval fun, which have made some researchers postulating that these unfortunate victims would result a ritual sacrifice. Good. Um, bog bodies. Ancient corpses found buried around the bogs, like covered in mud. Um, very strange. <laughs> very, very extremely well preserved, they're saying, back to 2,000 years. Um, so they can't really figure that one out. And let's look at one more so Mr. Servet can read. Um, so we have Fall of the Minoans, the Karnak Stones. I think that's it. I thought there were supposed to be ten. Oh, yeah. Who was Robin Hood, the Lost Roman Legion, the Voynich Manuscript, the Terra Mummies, or the Disappearance of the Indus Valley Civilization? Servet, you can choose. <laughs> Of course, I will choose number one. Okay. It's the appearance of... Oh, sorry. I'm going way... The, here we go. The disappearance of the Indus Valley civilization. Yes. Okay, go ahead. The ancient Indus Valley people, India's oldest known civilization, had a culture that stretched from western India to Afghanistan and a populace of over... Five million, India's oldest known civilization, were an impression and apparently sanitary Bronze Age bunch. The scale of their baffling and abrupt collapse rivals that of the great Mayan decline. They were a hygienically advanced culture with a highly sophisticated su sewage yep, drainage sewage. system. Sewage drainage system an immaculately constructed baths. There is to date no archaeological evidence of armies, slaves, conflicts or other aspects of ancient societies. No one knows where the civilization went. Very good. Um, interesting. So it's saying that there was over five million people and it just kind of disappeared. <laughs> Right? There's no evidence of anything. Um, very, very strange. And there's a picture of kind of what it looks like. So, um, and Firkin asked for 
Robin Hood. So maybe I'll read Robin Hood quickly and then we'll talk. Who was Robin Hood? The historical search for the legendary thief Robin Hood has turned up masses of possible names. One candidate includes the, the Yorkshire fugitive Robert Hod, also known as Havahard or Robert Hood of Wakefield. The large number of suspects is complicated further as the name Robin Hood became a common term for an outlaw. As literature began to add new characters to the tale, such as Prince John and Richard the Lionheart, the trail became more obscure. To this day, no one knows who this criminal really was. All we know is that it's supposed to be based on truth, I think, um, but we don't really know. Um, Russell Crowe, <laughs> yeah. Um, my next class, no, I can't give you a date. Um, it'll probably be about two weeks. Um, I'm going to, let me take a look. Um, Is it each in the mornings again or at this time? It's, it's going to be, I'd, um, what is it, the 27th? So one week is the third. Um, just a second, let me take a look. The next week is the 10th. It'll either be the week of the 10th or the week of the 17th. Um, I'm not sure yet. And so that, um, to answer when I'm going to be teaching, well, I'll be in Spain. Um, so I'm back in Central Time. And I start my face-to-face -face job at 4 p.m. through the week. So mm -hmm. depending on when I can get time slots, um, it's probably going to be afternoon, early afternoon in mm -hmm. European time. Um, if I can't get the slots that I want, then it might be in the morning European time. Not as early as Paris, though. Yeah, okay. So, probably like a, sometime between 11 and 3 mm -hmm. European time. Yeah. Um, and I won't be teaching as much um, because I'm going to be busy, busy, busy with my master's degree. So, um, let's take... A look for vocabulary before we talk. Uh, I know we actually read through quite a bit today, um, but did you make note of any new words that you want me to go over? No. No, everything's okay? Hieroglyphic. Ah, okay. Hieroglyphic. Hieroglyphic. Yeah. Hieroglyphic. hieroglyphic. Um, does anyone know what a hieroglyph is? A hieroglyph. It's um ancient Egyptian writing. So oh, hieroglyphs yeah. are like those. Um, uh, let me. Well, you'll know as soon as I show you. Yeah, on uh, the road it's stone. Hieroglyphs, exactly like carved into stones. This right Egyptian hieroglyphs. Um, so they're saying that it's like a hieroglyph written language from Easter Island. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't look like the Egyptian hieroglyphs, though. It looks a lot different. More it like looks like a child drew these. <laughs> more like kiss telling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, ch children's graffiti. Yeah, yeah graffiti. really. Yeah. It's, um, it's different, that's for sure. Um, okay, any other words? Everything's okay? All right. Um, well, let's talk. So before I get to so disrespectful, yeah. Um, before we get to the questions, just generally, what did you think about the article? Um, did you know about these places? Anything new or interesting to you? Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> they are all new for me. Uh, They're all new. Yes. It's same mm -hmm. for everyone else. Are they all new? Uh, I heard about you know, uh, kind of ancient, uh, disappeared ancient you know city or uh, you know, civilization in the in the civilization. That last one, number one. Yes, number one. Mm -hmm. That I've heard of that one. And I've heard about the bog bodies, but I've never heard about any of the other stuff. I read it through once and um, all of the other bits, and it's interesting. Um, 
They're overlooked, so it's hard to say we heard about them. Well, I've heard about a few of them. Um, which one, out of what we read or the other ones, which one seems the most interesting to you? Like if you were going to plan some sort of trip um, to do some tourist, touristy stuff, what would you, where would you go? Which one would you want to see? Um, yeah, Robin Hood is kind of a weird thing to be on the list. I don't know why Robin Hood's on the list. <laughs> but besides that, I thought it was interesting. Um, um, Victor, so take a look again at the list. Uh, where where would you go? Uh, I would go to Scandinavia. Scandinavia? Yeah. Or what was in Scandinavia? The bog uh, bodies. Ah, the bog bodies. Yeah. Um, is that where they said they were? I thought so. Northern, the wetlands of northern Europe. Sorry, wetlands, not wetlands. Wetlands of northern Europe. Um, I don't know if it gave us an exact, let's see. Bog. I guess uh, they're in Norway or Sweden. Mm-hmm. Here's the Wikipedia. Of course, there's a Wikipedia page for everything, right? Everything. Um, bog people. Toland man, that's the one that we saw that picture of. He's from the 4th century BCE. That's insane that he looks that preserved. It's crazy. Um, the oldest known bog body is the Kolbjur woman, woman from Denmark, who has been dated to 8,000 BCE. Look at this one. It just said this. From the Mesolithic period. That's old. That's crazy. Um, I can't. It's 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 hard to believe that they would be that well preserved. That was it's an interesting to me. What is bog? A bog is like a swamp. Um, do you know swamp? Mm -hmm. Like um, muddy, mucky, like a lot of bugs. Um, uh, a lot of the time a Bog is also called like quicksand. Um, there's a lot of the time there's quicksand in bogs. Do you know what quicksand is? No. Quicksand is that you um it sucks you in. It's like a a, a big uh -huh. mud puddle that if you step in it it slowly like sucks you under. You you've uh -huh. probably seen it in movies. Yes yes. Indie Jones or something. Yeah, yeah, it's probably an Indiana Jones. Yeah. Um, what are they? Are they mummies? No, they're not mummies. Um, let's maybe let's take a look at this bit. Their just re remains. They've retained their skin and organs due to the unusual conditions of the area. Um, the skin is well preserved. The bones aren't. They're like dissolved, um, but look how, I mean, it's unbelievable that that is someone from that long ago, <laughs> right? Um, so they're not mummies or anything, they're just bodies. Yeah. Um, okay, let's look at some other questions. Do you enjoy reading about mysterious history or history in general? Is this a topic that you'd ever study at, at a college or a university course? This sort of thing? Does this interest you? And why or why not? Some people um, aren't bothered with history. I, <laughs> I took some anthropology class. It was interesting. And what did you learn in that class? Uh, Rebbe Strauss. One class for Re Rebbe Strauss, uh -huh. <laughs> the French so I pronounce maybe wrongly, but and another class is uh, about in in English. I know we're doing it wrong, but the way it's pronounced no. in English is Levi Strauss. Ah, Levi Strauss, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Levi Strauss. Uh -huh. And another class is uh, the anthropology of women in a primitive society. Sorry, what is it in the primitive society? Women. Women. Or it's a sem seminar, so maybe yeah, I forgot. But yeah, 
one topic is a woman, how the in uh, in a primitive culture, woman in a primitive culture. Mm -hmm. Cool. So this this was an ancient history class. Kind of anthropology class. An oh right, right, anthropology. Um, yeah, a lot of ancient, a lot of history is blend, is mixed in with anthropology. Mm -hmm. um, for sure. Um, what about Servat? Do you like this sort of stuff, ancient history? Does it, is it interesting to you? Yes, my uh, my my area was about math and stuff, so it was uh, numerical stuff. It wasn't it wasn't a verbal thing, so I didn't take many history classes or classes related to this things, archaeology. But I find I do find this things interesting and I would like to learn about I like reading mysterious things and sometimes you really find some things that are pretty advanced according to their century and their technology so there are some surprising findings in this archaeological studies sometimes mm -hmm. But I find it interesting. But it on the other hand, there are so mysteries. So you have to, you want to uh, discover them by yourself. You go there and contribute to studies, but obviously you just get to it only. You could be the guy who discovers it. <laughs> yes. It must be an exciting job being an archaeologist. Um, does everyone know what that is? Archaeology. Yes. yes. What it? What is it? The study of? Uh, they dig, <laughs> dig, dig the ground and uh, find the uh, ancient ruins and uh, research about it, uh, about mm -hmm. history of uh, ancient civilization or ancient society or, yes, that. Uh -huh. Yes. Yep, exactly. Yep, digging. Um, it's more than just digging, sorry. <laughs> digging, that's your job. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's more than that. But yeah, exactly, like you said. Um, okay, Quang, what about you? Do, do you like this sort of history? Is this interesting to you, ancient history? Yes, it's very interesting to study about uh, uh, the, uh, the history and basically about history. Mm -hmm. We learn about the ants and how to work, how to live, and we 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 uh, we will try to to learn more and try to work uh, hard. We learn something from the the history. We the ants and people work hard and do not have much uh, condition like now we study something in that we can save uh, we can save time, save money and try to work hard. Okay. We're all wondering yeah, about your do. crickets, Quang. <laughs> <laughs> Quang, do you have quick do you have crickets or grasshoppers? Yeah. Are you feeding them as a pet? Yeah, do you have a pet lizard? <laughs> Did he kill the cricket? <laughs> I, um, I used to have a lizard and we fed him crickets. Mm. Yep. True story. Um... Okay, yeah, thanks, Crying. I'm on the same page. It's interesting um, to learn about the history. Let me wipe them out. They're gone. Okay, here's another question. Do you know of any other ancient mysteries that you'd like us to discuss or that you think should be on this list? Or any other sort of ancient history that's interesting for you? Atlantis? Uh huh. And what do we know about Atlantis? Does anyone know anything about Atlantis? Uh, Atlantis, you know, a kind of Asian book uh, described at Atlantis about Atlantis, but no, nobody's sure where the Atlantic is. Mm -hmm. it, it could be a big continent or it could be a small island, but nobody's sure. Mm -hmm. 
Um, do you think that this is really a place? Yeah, <laughs> according so? to that book. According to the book, it was existed and it was sink into the ocean. It sank into the ocean, under yeah. the ocean. Mm -hmm. So it's like thousands and thousands of feet below sea level? Mm. 10,000 leagues under the sea? I don't know if you guys have read that book. <laughs> Um, can you mention moi? Moi? Moi. I don't yeah. know what that is. Moi is a big uh, stone-made statue in Easter Island. It was uh, oh, another Oh, right, right. It is another uh -huh. mystery. And what do you think the story is with that? Uh, because uh, it's, I, uh, it, it's pretty giant, so. Uh, but it's small island, so people are amazed. Why, uh, how uh, Asian people uh, did you know, uh, you know, uh, built such giant statue, mm -hmm. but manually, by manual without machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think part of it is that um, the materials to build the statue aren't on that island, right? Was it, isn't I haven't. Uh... No, it could be yes. Yeah, so that's part of the yeah that's. Part of the mystery is um, not only how did they do this, but mm. where did they get the materials? Mm. Like, what? How is this even possible? Um, some people think it was aliens. Could be Easter Island, the kind of uh, was was a continent, Atlantis continent. Uh huh. <laughs> ah. Uh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then it drifted. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Other yeah. part of Atlantic uh, sunk into the ocean, and East mm -hmm. uh, Island uh, still remains. Mm -hmm. What else? Mm. Ah, Stonehenge, right? Stonehenge. What do we know about Stonehenge? Does anyone? Can anyone tell us about Stonehenge? Uh, it's in. Sorry, Victor. Could you? I speak up a little bit. It's in England. It's in England, yeah. and what is it? It's a bunch of rocks. Those freaking yes. Yes. I think. More specifically, uh, it's uh, the tower, the Easter Island head. I'm just gonna open up a picture of it. Here it is. Get an aerial view. Some of the stones are knocked over. Big stone so tables. Uh huh. It's in in a circle. Some of them are balancing along the top. Um, strange. So, what are some of the theories behind Stonehenge? Where did it yeah, come the, from? <coughs> because um, people said that it is. Uh, as a cemetery uh, to bear, bear the dying people. Uh huh. Just like a cemetery. Yeah. I read in the newspaper it said that it's a cemetery. Yeah. yeah it's possible. For the, uh, yeah, for the ensign. Mm hmm. Bury the, the dying. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are some other theories? So it could have been a cemetery. Ooh, this is a cool picture. Aliens again. <laughs> <laughs> always there. <you. laughs> I know, it's always about the aliens. Aliens are always the ones to blame. Um, okay, and another one here. Ah, the Nazca Lines. What do we do Nazca Lines? Ah, that's amazing, yeah. Uh-huh. What what is that all about? Does anyone know? Kind of picture on the ground. Uh huh. Big giant picture on yeah. the ground. Mm -hmm. Very mysterious. Another case of like, where did this come from? Um, it's only logical when you look at it on a plane. Yeah, from an aerial view, right? Um. Let's go back to its Wikipedia. Usually Wikipedia has a good um, picture. Oh, it's not a very good one. 
Oh, oh well. Um, a series of ancient... Okay, these are called geoglyphs. So, like hieroglyphs, but um, a little bit different. Um, yeah. Interesting. Mysterious. <laughs> this one's aliens for sure. <laughs> Definitely aliens. <laughs> um, okay. Do we know about any other mysteries? Sorry, I'm just going to refresh. I just froze. I'll be right back. One second. Sorry. Um, any other mysteries, ancient mysteries that have gone unsolved? Okay, here's another question. Um, how often do you think historians revisit archives to see if they've missed anything interesting? Um, do you think that there's still other mysteries out there that we haven't even tapped into yet? Do you know that expression? Tapped into? Oops, wrong chat. Sorry. I was wondering why the Hangout loaded so fast. I forgot the Kalingo. <laughs> ah. so. um. Oh, sorry. I see Frickens come up with some others. Spider-Man. Gotham City. Yeah. How often do you think that historians miss something? Um, do you guys think that there's other mysteries out there? Do you think maybe you could find a mystery <laughs> if you traveled mm -hmm. enough? What do you think? Uh, actually, one form, one of the member of rock band, he worked in a kind of uh, uh, kind of digging hole, digging ground uh, work for the archaeologist uh, research, and he it was very annoying job. It, he was a part time job, so because every every time something happened. They stopped their work and check. So it, it was tiresome. So he abandoned what what he found. Really, that's interesting. Yeah, it could be a kind of. A, I wonder yeah. if anyone has ever found like a really big ancient mystery and they've just kept it to themselves. They're like, I'm not telling anyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it happened actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's a famous kind of. Uh, archaeologist fake kind of. Uh huh. Yeah, he's finding. And, and did it, he it like was, admit that he found something? This picture was taken by the newspaper. Ah. Oh. News newspaper reporter. So, it, it so was a time. we still don't know what he found. He found it was a kind of ancient stuff, but actually he he himself. You know, buried that stuff beforehand, uh, and he he pretend to found that. Hmm. It so was a scandal. Yeah. He was a fake. <laughs> yes. A big scandal, um, mm. like the pyramids, Atlantis. Um. Okay. Well, do you guys have any final questions for me before I disappear for a couple weeks? No. Sorry. Sorry. I. Sorry. Sorry. I. I. I talk too much, but. Uh, okay. Advisory class. So. Uh, how do I contact? Sorry. Maybe, yeah, ad my advisory class. Yeah, I'll talk. To, yeah. Actually, um, Ken and Quang, can you guys stay after class just for a couple of minutes? I uh, sure. Cool. Okay. Okay, teacher. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Anything you want to talk to me about? Before I go. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, bye. <laughs> um, I'll miss you guys. I'll be back in a couple weeks. Um, here's my Facebook again. Um, add me, message me, stay in touch. I'll be back in what a little while. What are you doing instead? Sorry? What are you doing? I, um, I'm teaching. So I found a teaching job in Spain, um, South Spain. And I'm going to teach, and then I have weekends off, so I'll be traveling on the weekend. Probably renting a car and driving places. Wow. <laughs> Lots yeah, of okay. places. <laughs> it's about four hours from Lisbon, so that's my first destination. Um, oh, nice. Mm -hmm. oh, you will be traveling and having so much fun. 
Yeah, yeah I love traveling. I'm so excited. And I get a lot of time, actually, because I'm off Fridays at 8. So I have, like, yes. Friday night until I don't work again Monday until 4. So I have a long weekend, lots of long weekends. So oh, it's going to be nice. nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so then enjoy your vacation and fun, take care. If something happens, if you need help, call me. I'm just a few thousand of kilometers away, <laughs> maybe five, ten thousand. Yep, I will. I'll, I'll Facebook you. Yes. <laughs> um, once I'm settled in, I'll start teaching again, and I'll show you guys around Spain. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Bye, guys. See you soon. Bye.